Hey, welcome back to the Foolish Kitchen. And today is another messy day. As you can see, my the green is out, which means I'm going to be cleaning something and making a big mess. Um, FYI, when I cook, this mat is gone, but I also uh, scrub and sand the table, just in case there's anything left on it. Uh, I have shot video of that. It is extremely boring. Um, anyways, today we are doing the Bromwell uh, flour sifter. Now, I kind of boned up on it because I kind of knew a lot. I thought I knew a lot. Um, they still make it. They, this, they, they seem to date from 1930. There's a um, patent for the Bromwell B. The design has basically not changed. As in fact, all of the copies that are out there use their design. And the one that they're currently making is a little bit more elaborate. Um, and a lot of more expensive, but they are plentiful. I wanted one because I had gotten rid of mine, and uh, I went online for one, and I got one off of eBay, and then all of a sudden I started seeing them over. So now I got three, so two lucky people are going to get the other two. Um, but I, when I went online, I got this one, I think, um, and it came in less than stellar condition. This was the better condition one for reasonably cheap price. Um, they, they really, in any condition, you know, they're like $12. They are made in the United States. It is tinned steel. They do make a stainless one these days, but it's $145. Um, their tinned one is like $75. But they've been making them for so long, they're still out there. And the reason people keep buying new ones is because the bad old ones have been taken bad care of, or taken care of badly, or abused. How's that word? <laughs> Um, anyways, this was the one I bought, and when I got it, it had, um, it had rust inside the, uh, um, inside the screen area around the edge, around the rim, and, because most people don't know that they do come apart, the dasher, I'm calling it a dasher, uh, is a spring, so, uh, this one I got recently, and I bought it specifically, well, I bought it because it was there, and I couldn't leave it, um, because it's not in great shape it is it is rusted but not badly um but this one was only a little bit rusted and it was only centralized so i took it apart cleaned it and now this is the one that i use and i shockingly bought this one recently and it still had a lit paper label on it um only recently like in the last 20 years did they stop making them on mass like in stores because i i remember buying mine with paper label on it in the hardware store so um, these days, because they make a lot of, it's all handmade in the, in their factory. I believe it's in, uh, it's still in, India and uh, Indiana. Because they're all handmade, and they also make other things. They make flasks. They make all other other um, very appealing items. Uh, they're much more expensive to get one that's handmade in the United States. But these have always been handmade in the United States. So used ones are perfectly viable. People get freaked out by the rust because it is tin steel. I've got a secret. Never, ever, ever freaking wash it. You should never have to wash it. Wipe it down with a red rag and leave it the freak alone. Um, that's what I was trying to explain to somebody the other day. The most of the things I'm repairing are the damage is due to water. It's like, just don't wash them. Okay, so this is a spring. Uh, the new ones, I've never held a new one. Um, they have four wires, and it has a, a and it has a, a a join, a little uh, tin join on it. And I'm like not exactly sure how that comes apart. I'm sure it must because you have to clean them. But it's a little bit more elaborate, and that may just be their five cup one. I don't know. These are um, these are the threes. If you see a one cup on the market, it's a not made in the United States, but I want to have one. Um, three is fine. I mean, unless you're doing like huge amounts of, of cakes and stuff. So basically you push the spring in from the side and it goes like that. Now you could literally get this whole thing off, but it's, it's not worth the, the trouble to get it all back together. So all you need to do is do that. Now when you turn it upside down, this is only held in by the ridge. So here's our ever popular chopstick, one of my favorite tools. And because I got no fingernails and no really grip strength, so basically just go around the edge. Now, the, when I got this, it had um, 
it had schmutz and rust around the edge because somebody had obviously washed it, put it aside, and you know stuff gathered, I mean, flour paste or whatever. I, uh, but I'm going to just throw some mineral oil around the edge. You can use vegetable oil, you can use whatever you have, just something um, to lubricate what's going on in there. What I had done is I brushed molasses and water, um, and that can, the molasses at the you know, uh, very little molasses. It's nine to one water and molasses. It convinces the rust that it's water soluble. So I just left that sit for a while because I don't want to push and push a hole in the screen because I wasn't sure how rusty the screen was. So um, that's how you do that. And I want to make sure I go this the wrong direction. I'm going to push the wrong way. And then I just went around and I gave it a good push. And then the first time I had to do it a lot because it was gooky. So that just tips out. <gasps> I know, fascinating, eh? But this, um, generally, uh, screens will not be tinned. They might be stainless, which would be nice. Depends on how old these are. I don't think these are particularly old. Um, you can go online and try to date yours, uh, unless it has an actual patent number. Um, they've changed, they, they don't change much over time. They might change the printing. Uh, so somewhere there's probably, like, this one has a lot more printing. This one just has a little bit, because there was a paper label there. Um, this one's another one that has a lot more printing. The new ones say, you know, more. Um, the handles might change over time. The new handles are uh, not painted. Uh, older handles can be paint would be painted. So, like I said, the spring comes out like this, and now you can clean the whole string. You can get in here and clean inside the ridges. Um, if there's any rust, you can take this whole thing and soak it in uh, molasses and water or your favorite evaporust, your favorite, your favorite rusting, rusting cleaner. Um, you do not want to scrub this. I mean, I did bring out the steel wool because this is like a double zero or triple zero. For that one, that's as high as you want to go. You do not want to scrub. Um, this is brass, the brass one. Do not want to scrub it because the tin is, tin is very thin. And since you're not going to be washing this, you're not going to be scrubbing burnt off food off of it. You know, you can get the rust off the first time and, and not worry about it. So there's not going to be any more scrubbing involved, but you do not want to create any more wear marks where the tin is gone, because that just asks for trouble. So, like I said, you can go inside and clean this, you know, all the ridges, anything that looks like it has um, flour and water built up, uh, the, like pick flour paste. Really, that's almost going to be the only thing you're going to see, except for rust, lots of rust. Um, but the rust is going to be where there's no, um, you know, where the, the tin is worn thin right around the grooves. You want to clean it fairly well the first time. And that's another thing that after you wash, you cleaned it, rinse it, put it on top of the oven. You know, not long. You can put it in, you might be able to put it in the oven. But the, I'm always wary about the handles getting too dry. So uh, dry it on the oven. A couple of minutes, not much, just enough to make the water of that poof. And then wipe it down with um, your favorite vegetable oil, mineral oil, what have you. This is this is the part that I really had to scrub, but I've never had to. I haven't had to revisit this, and I'm not sure if these. Um, I think this sharp spot is supposed to be there because that helps keep it into the groove. I'm not sure, but I'm not going to knock it down just because, I mean, I don't take this out very often. So, like I said, you just bang it on the counter, take the flour out, and leave it alone. It's, it's nothing else is going to, bad's going to happen to it. I can, this I don't even want to, but um, what I'm going to do, just, what I'm going to do with the serious rust spot, this is water and, um, and uh, Barkeeper's Friend, because it has that little oxalic acid in it. I mean, it's going to get rinsed off, so I'm not going to die, but it will work faster than a soak in, in a molasses and water bath. But I just want to get, there's probably rust underneath this rolled edge, but that's it. I just want to get in there. That's gone. That's really the only rust I see. That's amazing. Baking soda. Baking soda.
the dasher out of the way. That's what I'm going to call it because that's what it reminds me of. And put the one side of it into a groove. And then if you don't feel comfortable with your fingers, because like I said, I do not want to push the screens out of the. And don't, you know, just tap, move it around. Don't, there we go. That was it. That was not rocket science. Now this spring goes right back where it came from. They all need a little coating of mineral oil. Um, just in the places that rust would accumulate. So in the, uh, now that they're, they've been dried over the stove, there's no moisture in that little crease, so we're going to fill it up with a little mineral oil. Any places a join, you know, you can actually spray it on there, wipe it off, whatever makes you happy. But anywhere there's a seam or a join, those are the weak spots where the mineral oil needs to get in first before moisture does. And that gets it a little spot over here. I'm going to make sure that's covered. Um, before I use these again, yes, I will come through and I'll wipe them dry, wipe them dry so they don't end up with a coating of um, mineral oil and flour. 